Amen, amen, amen. The third part of this message, the power of sorrow, the power of, of, of sadness, or the power of guilt. We were saying, we were talking about the first part of this message, the positiveness of godly sorrow. We first covered that there are two kind of sorrows. The sorrow that came from the world, and we explained that, and the sorrow from God, which is when we measure ourselves with the standard of the word of God, and we found ourselves inadequate. We found ourselves not measuring, not measuring up to the word of God. Uh, meaning the word of God is here, our standards are well below the word of God. So we feel bad, and that's the kind of sorrow that is positive. Because number one, that sorrow shows you that there's something missing on the inside of you. Or it's showing you that something is not complete on the inside of you compared to the standard of God. So God is sorrow that we should welcome. God is sorrow that we should see a positiveness about. It's a sorrow that comes from the word of God. And what is that word of God is doing? That word of God is challenging us with the standard of the word of God. For example, if you steal, but you don't know that the word of God says you should not steal, you won't feel bad. And let's say you go to church and a preacher is preaching and say, you shouldn't steal because stealing is a sin before God. And if you steal, this thing will happen to you, that thing will happen to you. You will feel bad. And that's the, the, the sorrow, the sadness that we are saying that you should welcome. That's the sadness that we are saying that is, there is a, something positive about it. And what is positive about it? Number one, once you know the standard of the word of God and, and you cannot measure up to it and you feel sorry for yourself, you feel the sorrow, the sadness, you feel guilty for what you have done, Next time you want to do that thing, your conscience will bother you. Your conscience will be bothering you because you know the standard of the word of God. And you know that what you are about to do is not good. And, and, and the God brings that sorrow into our being to remind us that we are not measuring up to his standard. That's the first thing about the sorrow, the, uh, the sorrow of God. He reveal ourselves to us. And the next time we want to do that thing, our conscience bothers us. Not only that, the second thing that is positive about the, sor the godly sorrow is that that sorrow challenges us to rise out of where we are to where God wants us to be. And if I, like I, the example I was, I was giving earlier, if I steal and I, I, I felt good about it before, and I hear the word of God, or I read the word of God that says stealing is bad. From the moment I feel sorrowful, from the moment I'm sad about stealing, number one, next time I feel like stealing, I'll feel bad about it. But then number two, that sorrow will push me to want to stop stealing. And that's the second element that is very positive about the word of God. What does that mean? That means that if I'm doing something that is not measuring up to the word of God, but I'm not able to feel sorrowful about it, more than likely I'll keep it. Oh, I've, I've seen preachers on TV, for example, who are homosexual and who are lesbian and they say they are preachers, but they, 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 they don't see anything wrong with their homosexuality or lesbianism. Why? Because they don't measure up to, they don't see, they, they have no, they have not felt sorrowful about the word of God that dictate that those such practices are not acceptable according to the standard of God. And not only that, either you fornicate or you commit adultery or you smoke drugs or you smoke cigarettes or you, you, whatever sin you are committing, not only lesbianism or homosexuality are sin, all of the sin that, that, that are keeping us away from the standard of God. If the reason why we can dwell in those sins is because we are not feel sorrow. Sorrow. We didn't feel sorrow. We didn't feel bad about those sins. Because if you feel bad about the sin good enough, next time you want to commit that thing, your conscience will be bothering you. And if it bothers you so much, one day you feel like you need to do something to stop doing it. 
in order for you to feel good because every time you do it again, your conscience will bother you feel bad. I watched a movie and a guy was engaged to a girl and he, he found himself on an island with another woman and they end up sleeping together and after they slept together, the guy said, oh, this is wrong. Oh no, what did I do? The guy felt so bad about himself because he, he just slept with a woman that is not his fiance, that is not his wife. And he, he, he felt bad because he promised a lady somewhere else that he's going to marry, but here he is sleeping with another woman. There's a sorrow that makes that guy to feel bad. And, and when the lady, he slept with, came back again and said they should do it again, the guy said, no, I can't do this again because he felt sorrowful. He felt guilty. And that creates something into him. So from now on, don't run away from verses of the scripture that make you feel, feel bad about yourself. Don't run away from the word of God or from those churches or those preachers that preach to, to you messages that make you feel bad about yourself. Because those messages are messages that will push you up. So you can begin to measure out with the standard of the word of God. Because if you don't feel sorrow about something, you're not going to change nothing. Two people, for example, who are born in a miserable or in a low-class lifestyle, one can emerge out of that poverty or that miserable lifestyle. And the other will just be pleased with, to stay there and die into it because... The one who emerged out of it, that one has determined that there's going to be a better life than this. And this individual who feels sorrowful about his miserable condition, he emerged because he first realized that this is not the best that the life has to offer. This is not the best that he can get out of this world. And he started stepping out so he can find something else better to do about his life. Any situation you, 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 you show me, any miserable or bad situation you show me, there are people who will be pleased with that situation. For example, let's say in your family, people don't go to school or get a higher education. Some people will be like, well, my mother did it, my father stopped at a higher school level. I'm going to stop also at a higher school level because my parents my parent make it, I can make it too. But somebody else said, no, 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 I need to get a college degree. And if I get a college degree, I'll do better than my father did or my grandmother did or whatever. So the sorrow of God. We're talking about the sorrow of God. I'm giving those examples to show you that the sorrow that the word of God gives you. And generally, what is that sorrow? The word of God shows you your sinful nature. Whatever you are doing bad, that's what the word of God is bringing to you. The word of God is telling you that this sin that you are committing is not acceptable before God and this sin will bring you to hellfire. This sin will cut you from God and your prayer will not be answered when you pray to God and God is calling you. God is bringing that sorrow into your life so you can feel bad enough about yourself and desire to change your life around. The positiveness of God is sorrow. Without sorrow, we don't grow in God. If God is saying something, you don't feel bad about your, your silly behavior, your sinful behavior, you're not going to change that behavior. Our time has run out. Let me go to the second part of this message. The result of godly sorrow. What are the results? Very simple. Like you read in uh, 2 Corinthians the Bible says, for godly sorrow works repentance. For godly sorrow works repentance. The sorrow of God, it works repentance in your life. It pushes in you. Like I said earlier, first, when you do the bad thing and you find the standard of God, next time you want to do it, you, 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 you resist a little bit. You say, oh no, me again. I want to do this thing. You're doing this back and forth thing. And maybe you are not strong enough to resist and you do it again. Then you feel bad. Very bad. And then you feel bad so much that say, oh God, I don't want to feel this. I don't want to have this bad feeling again next time if I do that. So finally you end up resisting it because the sorrow of God will walk repentance in your life. 
Are you going to church and you have not repented? You still live like a worldly person? Do you call yourself a child of God? But there's no difference between you and the people of the world. It's because you don't feel God in sorrow. Because maybe you are going to a church where they don't even preach the, 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 the holy word of God. They don't preach the word of God that can bring repentance into your life. You need to find verses of the scripture and find the word of God that will minister, challenge your life. So you can feel sorrowful about your sin and that sorrow will work repentance into your life. For God is sort of worse repentance. And, and, and Matthew, the person we read together, sorry, we don't have a lot of time, but the, the person we read together in Matthew, Jesus said, Bless her, they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Jesus said, If you mourn, oh, you feel bad, you cry, and all that, you shall be comforted. And what should we mourn about? Mourn about our bad behavior, mourn about our sinful behavior. And if we mourn about it, and we pray, oh God, please save me from this drinking. God, uh, save me from this fornication. God, save me from this uh, sad behavior, anger, or whatever silly behavior, whatever sinful behavior that we have that is not pleasing unto God. And we mourn, the Bible says, we shall be comforted. The sorrow will bring change into your life. God is sorrow walk repentance. Jesus said, if you, if you mourn, you shall be comforted. What did Jesus also say? Verse 6, he said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, he said, Blessed are they which do anger and thirst after righteousness. What will happen to them? If you anger, you're hungry for righteousness. You thirst. Oh, you feel like drinking water of righteousness. What will happen to you? Jesus said, For they shall be filled. Oh my goodness, if you look for righteousness, you hungry, oh God, I need righteousness. I need this. Oh, you you sorrowful about it. God said you shall be filled. What am I saying in this message? I know there are many preachers that tell you, you you shouldn't feel bad at all about yourself. You shouldn't welcome any sorrow. But the word of God is telling us, in order for us to progress, we have to feel sorry about ourselves. We have to feel sorrowful, we have to feel guilty, we have to feel sad. Because that sadness will walk repentance. The godly sorrow. We're talking about the godly sorrow. The worldly sorrow won't bring us anywhere. So we need to reject that one. But the, the, the godly sorrow is what's going to bring change into our life. My friend, what is this message? This is the conclusion of this message. Have you been feeling godly sorrow? Do you feel bad when you sin? Do you feel guilty when you sin? If you sin and you just, you just all right, you sleep with a woman who is not your wife, you just feel all right. Something is wrong with that picture. The power of God is touching you right now and calling you to repentance. You're feeling bad about what you did, uh, living with a girlfriend or a boyfriend you're not married to. That's a sinful lifestyle. And God is touching you right now as I'm speaking and God is putting sorrow in your life. And from now on, you're not going to be able to continue in that lifestyle and be at ease with it. You can continue for a while, but God's sorrow will be knocking at your door until you repent. That's the power of godly sorrow. Let's pray right now and ask God to touch you and spend some time in prayer as we don't have time on this video that is so limited and pray to God and open yourself and cry to God and say, God, have mercy on me. God, come and deliver me from this sin. And God, let deliver me. Walk repentance into me and pray. Spend some time in prayer. I'm going to pray for you, but spend some time in prayer yourself. So God can give you his sorrow. Whenever you do something bad, so you can change your life around and repent and, and feel God in your life. And experience God in your life. God is a spirit. If, if, if we experience God, we'll feel good about ourselves. Remember, like I said, we are not just a physical being. We are more of a spiritual being than a physical being. Many people are running after money and all that, but if you can do stuff that can fill your spirit and your soul, you'll be a better person than money can bring to your life or materialism. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your power in this place. Thank you for your power through this message. Lord, I pray that this power touches your people. That are now feeling your sorrow. That are now feeling your sorry, your, your sadness. 
Your people that are now feeling your guilt, Lord, touch them with your guilt. And whatever they, they step out of your wall, let your guilt cover them. And let this godly sorrow bring repentance into their life. And let them change their lives so those that are mourning, they can be comforted. Lord, whatever sin we are struggling with, give us the power to repent and change our life around. And have happiness and be feeling you in Jesus' name. Lord, touch everybody who listen to this message. Let something change about their life and forever for the rest of their life. Let them feel godly sorrow and be able to change their life around. Get repented and, and be serving you and experience joy. And speak up job in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.